Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan with Sage Dynamics and this is the Microtech Defense Industries R2K9 Suppressor. All things considered, I like guns to be quiet versus loud. So, uh, it's really no shock that I'm a big fan of suppressors. And I like basically exploring uh, any new suppressor that comes along if I'm able to get my hands on it to see if it's going to offer a slight advantage over suppressors that are maybe a little bit older design or that I've had for a little bit while had for a little bit longer. Uh, as far as suppressor technology goes, there's only small incremental measurements of, of performance that can be increased based on materials, design, or innovation, because the general concept of how suppressors got to work has pretty much been understood for a very, very long time. That doesn't mean that someone can't necessarily do it better or do it differently in a way that's going to appeal to uh, your sensibility over certain topics. So when Microtech Defense Industries announced that they were going to be putting out a suppressor, I was intrigued because if you're not aware, Microtech Defense Industries is kind of a sister company to Microtech Knives. Microtech Knives being a higher end, almost um, a gentleman's knife, if you will, kind of the Rolex, I guess, a comparison can be made of nice sharp implements when it comes to pistol native suppressors generally uh i'm i'm kind of ambivalent about them because pistol suppressors just by the nature of how a suppressor has to work and how large it generally has to be tend to be a little bit cumbersome so for me when it comes to a pistol suppressor i want something that's short enough to provide um hearing protection, meaning it's going to bring the report of the gun under that pain threshold, but is light enough to allow me to maneuver the handgun reasonably. Just taking holsters completely out of the equation, there are some holsters you can use with pistol suppressors. It's not something you're generally going to carry with, uh, but it could be a special purpose gun or a home defense gun or, or something like that. But a lot of times pistol suppressors are relegated to range toys when put on pistols. Now, when you put one on a PCC or a submachine gun, that definitely changes things because those are generally rifle configuration. Uh, so holstering, concealability, those things don't become nearly as large of a concern. So for me, the ultimate and first benchmark of a pistol suppressor would be, can I comfortably shoot the pistol with the suppressor on it one-handed? If I can't do that, if there's some kind of issue with that, then I'm already not really interested in the pistol suppressor for pistol use. Uh, with the R2K9, that's definitely not an issue. It's made almost entirely of titanium, so it has a reduced weight over what you might see from some other pistol suppressors. And it's also modular in the fact that I can put it into a K configuration. The longest section of the suppressor, which what you'd have is if you put it in the quote unquote K configuration, houses five baffles. If you add the additional long configuration, so you put it to its full maximum length, you're gonna have an additional two baffles. Those are baffles themselves are made out of titanium. Uh, everything is put together with uh, baffle retaining caps, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. Uh, some of the other suppressors out there, especially those with removable baffles, they don't have that, which means you need something else retaining it. This, you can take the suppressor apart. It's got replaceable O-rings. Uh, and of course, just like any, almost any other suppressor, I should say, out there, you can change out your uh, piston system or muzzle attachment devices to accept multiple thread patterns. Now the R2K9 is full auto rated, which I'm def was definitely going to test during the review process. And it's also rated for 300 blackout in subsonic. Nothing in the R2K9 literature stated specifically if that full auto rating or that 300 black subsonic rating was K configuration or full size configuration. So I was just gonna go ahead and assume that I could run everything in the K configuration. If you do a little bit of shopping around, you'll find that the R2K9 is higher in pricing. 
it is an expensive suppressor versus some of the other nine millimeter or pistol suppressors or that category of suppressors that you can get. So some people may be like, well, why would I spend this money versus maybe even as, as much as half of the cost on something else from a different company? I wanted to find that out myself. Now, if you're not familiar with my review process, I do 2,000 rounds for the review of the Microprotect Defense, Industry, Defense Industries R2K9. I was going to do the same 2,000 round review process. Be shooting 115, 124, 124 plus P, and 147 subsonic because suppressors with subsonic is usually just a match made, and having that gives you your ultimate reduction in sound at the ear. R2K9 comes in a very ingenious little kit that gives you everything you're going to need for full disassembly of the suppressor and all tools you, tools you will need for reconfiguring the suppressor itself and as well as I said as where as well as what I said disassembly uh, the body machining itself and usually the cost of titanium is in the machining time not necessarily the material itself although it is uh, easily more expensive than you know some grades of aluminum that you find other suppressors made out of uh, but they put a lot of attention to the machining work of the body so you have actual grip surfaces knurling or or whatever you want to call it so it's easily disassembled it's not something you're going to have to fight with or use oil strap wrenches or anything like that uh, most of the things can be done just hand tighten even if you do over tighten like i generally do with suppressors especially if i'm going to be running them on a submachine gun higher rate of fire uh, more vibration uh, more gases going through them uh, using a, a rubber strap wrench to make sure everything stays nice and tight or using their included tools to make sure everything stays nice and tight. Uh, that additional knurling on the body of the suppressor makes disassembly very easy compared to, like I said, some of the other suppressor designs that are out there. Modular suppressors seem to be more and more popular. Uh, you saw them a lot, you see them a lot, I should say, in pistol calibers, but now you're starting to see them in rifle calibers as well for modular being able to remove a few baffles, which generally makes the suppressor a little bit louder but it gives you a length savings if you're going to be running a suppressor on a pistol that length savings is huge some different companies have taken the approach of increasing the diameter of the suppressor so you get the same sound reduction at the shorter at the shorter length the microtech suppressor has a narrower diameter by comparison to some of those other suppressors i was generally apprehensive even though I liked the narrower body, the narrower main tube of the R2K9, thinking, well, because it's narrower, it's going to be louder, which isn't necessarily the case because baffle design plays a huge part in hearing attenuation, the actual sound of the suppressor at the ear. Another potentially aggravating factor of pistol suppressors, or just suppressors in general, is their effect on point of aim, point of impact for a gun zeroed without being suppressed. Handguns, this is definitely something that has uh, been an issue. Because you're going to take the suppressor off, put the suppressor back on probably, and you're probably going to shoot the pistol more often unsuppressed than suppressed, there is always zero issues. Just like a lot of other uh, suppressors this thing can be indexed I can pull out on the main tube make small adjustments as I'm shooting the gun to get the suppressor to match up to my unsuppressed point of aim point of impact Microtech has a lot of settings for that it's not one two three or four it's multiple uh, which allowed me to walk the suppressor back into the zero position of my red dot handguns very easily now I used multiple handguns during the review process with the R2K9 especially Glocks. I found over years and years and years of shooting suppressed handguns, the Glock is the most finicky gun when it comes to being suppressed in its OEM configuration. Aftermarket slide work aside, if I'm running OEM internals, the Glock tends to be very finicky with just a wide a range of a wide arrangement of suppressors. So for me, the benchmark on a pistol anyway is if the pistol can run, if the Glock, I should say, can run with the suppressor, then the suppressor is handling uh, gas very good, the piston is very good, the spring system is very good, the overall performance of the suppressor is going to work well. If it runs on a Glock, it's probably going to run on anything else you're going to put it on. Once I got a really good feel for this suppressor, my initial 500 rounds, which were shot pretty much almost entirely on handguns with both supersonic and subsonic ammunition, I wanted to do my 500 round burn down. If you're not familiar, 500 rounds as quickly as possible to see if the accelerated rate of fire causes any issues I wouldn't might I might not otherwise notice shooting the same 500 rounds over a much longer period of time. We're not giving the suppressor a lot of time or really any time to cool down between magazines. So we're seeing basically the extreme of performance as quickly as possible. Now, 
Microtech Defense Industries says the R2K9 is full auto rated. Full auto rating is kind of a nebulous topic because it means different things to different companies unless you're talking about the mil spec definition of full auto rated. So if you're gonna claim your suppressor's full auto rated, I'm gonna put that to the test. Here's your burn down. So that was a quick 500 rounds, uh, quite a bit of full auto fire in there as well, and the R2K9 did very well. Now, I did the burn down in the full configuration. The main reason for that is that's the default configuration of the suppressor. So I did it in full configuration. However, I'm not a huge fan of that longer suppressor. So once I tried it out in the K configuration, I pretty much gravitated to the K configuration because it's hearing safe. And what I mean by hearing safe is I don't have pain at the ear. If you're gonna be shooting suppressors for a prolonged period of time, even with pistol ammunition, nine millimeter if you will, you should definitely still wear ear pro. Uh, suppressors can still be an emergency type thing. It's not something, uh, as I've found out through my life and, and taking, taking my hearing more and more seriously the older I get and the more I shoot, uh, you definitely still wanna protect your ears even though it doesn't hurt when you shoot the gun. Uh, if you're going to be shooting one, two, three hundred rounds, throwing some ear pro on is still a really good idea, even if you won't look as cool. The sound on the R2K9, even with the, the relatively smaller diameter of the suppressor body, in full configuration and K configuration is very nice. It is a really good sounding can, which I kind of already said, but I'm going to say it again, was surprising based on... Um, the the overall diameter of the body now the k configuration is still a longer suppressor when compared to some of the other suppressors that are out there this isn't really a comparison video but i feel like it's worth mentioning because you might see the k configuration and be like well that's still kind of long and it is but it's not heavy uh, the materials make a very light can which as i said my benchmark for pistol suppressors is can i comfortably shoot it one-handed the answer is definitely yes Shooting 115, 147, multiple different handguns, uh, FN 509, of course a Glock 17, which like I said is kind of my benchmark for, for performance of suppressors on handguns. Uh, and I also shot it on a uh, Smith & Wesson M&P, which has had some slide work done by Agency Arms, so it lightens the slide mass, which can also cause interesting performances from certain pistol suppressors without having to rework spring weights or anything like that. And of course, submachine guns slash PCCs. Ran it on my MP5, my SIG MPXK, my CZ Scorpion, and 300 Blackout using my SIG MCX. Now this is a nine inch gun, which is kind of the barrel benchmark, uh, if you will, for 300 Blackout subsonic for a lot of suppressors that are out there. They're pistol native, but allow for 300 Blackout subsonic use. So anything shorter than nine, I really can't speak to because that's what I shot it on. But even with the subsonic 300 blackout heavier round, I still get really good sound attenuation in both the K and the full size configurations. Over the 2000 rounds, the R2K9 took in a very nice uh, seasoning. Uh, it came in more of a naked, kind of a uh, tooled look. And then over those 2000 rounds, uh, the metal <laughs> took on that, that nice spicy tint to it. Because I went through those 2,000 rounds, 9mm and the 300 blackout that I shot through it, very quickly. It actually took me, uh, I think, three range trips to go ahead and knock everything out and, and, and be able to film the final video for the end of the 2,000 rounds. I'm very happy with the performance of the R2K9. I think it is a really good suppressor. Is it worth the MSRP? That's really up for you to decide. I don't really necessarily have to get into that, but I can tell you right now that I will be getting another one of these. Uh, Microtech did send me this one, but I'm going to go ahead and buy a second one because I like the features, I like the materials, I like the construction, I like the overall modularity of the suppressor and how well it performs on multiple different guns, pistols, and PCCs. Most pistol suppressors are going to perform fine on a PCC slash SMG just because of the nature of, of how those firearms are a little bit less finicky with suppressors than your handguns can be, but it performed great 
on the Glock, performed great on the MP, performed great on the 509, uh, performed great on the Beretta. Uh, of course, the Beretta is probably the easiest pistol, in my experience, to suppress and not have any reliability issues. So if you were to ask me, is the R2K9 worth the price, I'm definitely going to say yes. Uh, multiple indexing options, the overall configuration, the fact that it comes with all the tools I need to break the suppressor all the way down. I can throw it in the sonic cleaner because the material is just made out of. There's a lot to love about the R2K9. The price is not something I'm a huge fan of. However, I don't really see this as... Um, and some people might be like, well, it's Microtech. Of course it's expensive. Well, Microtech produces quality stuff. I'm a huge fan of Microtech knives for everyday carry. Uh, both their fixed blades and their auto openers. On the suppressor side of the house, I think this is an excellent entry into the suppressor market, and I really hope that they put out suppressors for larger calibers because the world and the suppressor world needs more competition, and I really like the way Microtech has approached the overall design of the suppressor. It really feels like a high-end boutique suppressor, uh, but it's available, uh, and it's got the parts and everything that comes with it, so I don't really have to seek out additional stuff besides adapters to be able to put it on multiple thread pitches. It comes with everything I need right out of the box for a pistol. I gotta order something to be able to shoot it on 300 blackout, depending on what thread pitch your 300 blackout is. And the suppressor's ready and good to go, and it's a very light, very modular suppressor. So I'm giving this like huge accolades. I like the suppressor a lot. Uh, now, the overall bi body diameter is still a little bit uh, larger than what you'd need to be able to run a pistol without suppressor sights, but there aren't too many suppressors that really fill into that category. So, for configurations, my suggestion, the best suppressor height sights you can get would be a red dot if you're going to run on a handgun. If you're going to run on a PCC or an SMG, not an issue at all. Uh, but I'm really pleased with the R2K9, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who's curious. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.